Hey y'all, it's Anime Kim, and today I'm going to be quickly reviewing the 40th episode of Gekige no Kitaro because the Rams versus the New Orleans Saints is going to go on in like at least 12 more minutes and I want to catch that live so I'm going to make this quicker than usual. But, oh and in case you're wondering, I'm running for the LA Rams. Go Rams! Now, this episode was pretty fucking tragic I gotta say. In a good way, not because the episode bad, was bad. I like how when they built up Usumi-san's struggle when it came to him doing his comedy sketches, that sort of bit was sad because I can kind of relate to that as a YouTuber. Sometimes I have my peaks and then I have my not so nice peaks and I have my lowest moments when um, when it comes to like YouTube where sometimes if it doesn't turn out the way I want it to, but I gotta live with it because it's a live reaction and, and I mean I can't just fuck, yeah I gotta release it. but. Damn, it's still, like, that got to me. And then I like how this episode emphasized his family later on. And that's the reason why he wants to make this money through, like, comedy sketches. Because he wants to support his family. So I like how this episode built some emotional struggle. And then, as the episode went on, I kind of like when Ratman was just fucking shooting the fuck out of Isumi son When he's all like, well, you can get another job that doesn't involve being a comedian. And then when he says he's the reason for his family being poor, I was like, whoa! So, I like this. It shows you that Ratman, even though he's poor as fuck, he does have a good amount of intelligence too. So, there were nice elements to this episode. It gave Ratman more characterization. It gave Katara more characterization. Because all the previous episodes have emphasized Katara's creed when it comes to... Hey, if a human fucking agrees to this a deal with the yokai and the yokai does their end of the bargain, or in a situation where a human aggravates a yokai, usually Kitaro just lets the yokai take care of it. But I like how you can hell tell Kitaro's sympathy, he had some sympathy for at least a little bit, but not for assume some for the, his wife Megumi and his and daughter Miku, because when he saw them and he's like, all right, I'm gonna help Help him out just this once, but if he ever angers Kar Sarakoso, or if it's too late, then he's not going to be able to do anything about it. And I love those sequences. Well, yes, it showed Katara a hardcore man and hardcore angry for um, Isumi-san stealing the song. At the very least, it showed that Katara tried his best, and it tells you if a kid's involved, Katara's going to be softer than usual at the very least. So I like that bit of characterization given off towards Katara. So though, these were nice elements about this episode. Isu Isumi Sun's family were also nice characters, even though they were introduced just for this episode. Just when they were like, we just care about your safety, we don't care about these competitions and all of that. And I like how near the end, when fucking Isumi Sun was saved by Kataro, and then war and then he fucking promises never to use the Isumi the song again that Sora Kozo uses. And then when the motherfucker just uses the song again because the comedy sketch she tried out at the last second didn't work out, I was like, fuck! Especially when it showed Megumi and uh, Miku both sad that his father just gave in and he pretty much gave up his... He pretty much gave up his... His uh, pride... He pretty, no, he didn't give up his pride. He pretty much gave up his well-being just for a few seconds of fame, and that was kind of sad. Near the end, when Sarakozo attacked Izumi-san, and he does, and Izumi-san deserved it too. He was warned multiple times. So I like how this episode pit up, built up the emotional struggle, and it kind of made it seem like Izumi-san was gonna learn his lesson. But then when he didn't, I was like, "Fuck!" But then again, it was a good way to end off the episode because it shows off that sometimes, as people, we don't learn our lessons early and. If we don't learn our lessons early, bad shit could happen, like Asumi, like bad shit happened to Asumi son. So I kind of like the end, the moral of the story of the episode gave I think it's a positive message towards kids, but not just towards kids, towards adults, because sometimes adults do need a kick in the rear too to respond to things properly. And I think that's what makes this episode really strong. Aside from the other things being good, animation, art were good for the most part. And uh, I'd say the only downside was. How are they going to explain this into the continuity? Because Sorokoza was doing the show live on TV, so it, it wasn't a competition. So, how are they going to explain this in the continuity in future episodes? But then again, at this point, that way we, 
we can pretty much assume Toei don't give a fuck about continuity. And that's why I'm going to rate this episode an 8 out of 10 instead of a 9 out of 10. Because this episode would be a 9 out of 10 if it didn't have that little issue at the end. If it would have been just Sarakozo celebrating and then he's, um, or maybe him going out to walk out for the competition. Then he's attacked by the Sarakozo when there's no one else. There would have been no continuity issue if Toei would have written it differently. But so he just put themselves in a trap again. Which is weird. I mean, that they keep on putting themselves into this trap. But this episode was still amazing, though, in its own way. And that's why I read it in 8 out of 10. Because they have the human element. So anyways, guys and girls, my thoughts in the episode. Comment on your thoughts in the episode below in the comment section. Rate the video. Subscribe if you want to see more reviews and reactions. And I'll see you guys later. Subscribe for more. Alright, guys and gals. Thank you so much for watching. Bye-bye.